yes, 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 yes. Assume you can hear me. Turn that down. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Bring this up. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about comes about. Whatever you focus on grows. That's what grows. What you're focused on today are the seeds that you plant for later. I teach this idea. Thank you about the audios. Good. This idea of the money flow is not just a stock strategy of looking at charts, but it is, right? It is that. It's one of my most valuable possessions is the ability to look at charts, but not look at charts to try to necessarily interpret charts, but for a repetitive pattern where I can make a repetitive action. And that through the power of repetition, and hopefully over time develop some skill, time times amount times yield equals, meaning you begin to see life through this exchange of time. Time is money, right? Time is energy also, man. It's spiritual. And it goes up and down. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It was 36,800. Now it's 34,265. And inside of that, it's 30 different stocks that move up and down. And this is the composite average of all 30. It's a spiritual connection with money and business in America that has a global worldwide reach. These companies do business here, Indonesia, China, Africa, Egypt. These companies do business there. There's only three ways to get rich in America. Own a business. Oh, be the owner. You make a bunch of money. Right? Shares is another form of ownership of business. So either own a business, dry cleaners, restaurant, bar, real estate's a business. A business that makes widgets and knickknacks and things. You own a business. You invest in business, right? Or you own real estate. Everything's within that. And you say, well, I'm going to write a book. All right, well, that's the business of writing books, right? And then some people are paid to work inside the industry that write books. And some people produce paper for books, right? Like IP, international paper. And I, as a, an observer of the money flow, can watch and look at society and look at markets and watch it go up and down. And I can make a determination is this, relative to recently is this price high or low and you say well i, I mean you know how do you judge a house when i started buying real estate it was 24,000 the last property i bought was 315,000 they're about the same size prices move up and prices move down and what i discovered years ago is i began to catch on to this idea that there's only a couple ways to get rich in America and that anybody could over a period of time, if you understood the equation of time times amount times yield, and you took time or money or you know your spiritual energy, the profits of your day, of your you're a fucking awake today. And you'll be awake for 24 hours and they'll call it tomorrow. And then there'll be another day. And it goes tick, 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 tick. That's time. And you're living and operating inside of that. And this right here is the time of the company IP. But we could put you on a chart right now too. You get up. That's the oh, tick over here to the left. You guys think this about charts, man. It's bigger than that. This is the essence of life. It's energy, time, value. And it fucking moves up and down. And you wake up and you move up and down. And you have a certain value. 
to your time, your talent, your skill set, or just your ability to say, yeah, I'll come in when you told me to and do fuck what you said. And that comes with it as a price, a value, and we could chart it. And every day I could watch you perform. And that's what this is. Every day I get a fucking choice. I can look at the price of IP or not. You decide. You decide. I, I don't know. Let's don't look at this. What do you want to look at? Uh, what are you thinking about? Let's look at Starbucks. And we can look at it. And we don't know where this is going. Nobody knows. We can analyze. We could, we could sit around. Uh, I'm smarter than you. I read this. I read that. I went here. I read that. I believe this guy. This government report. And you can formulate and come up, well, I think the economy is going to do, okay. You can do that. Good luck. Or you just watch it. And you can start some skill sets. See, time times amount times yield. If I began to track this and I had a way of evaluating this stock and you say, well, how could you do that? Just, just, just go with me. Just pretend like we could do that. What if we could pretend that we could look at this price right here, Starbucks. What the fuck is happening? here? What does interest rates have to do with you buying coffee? Near nothing. This stock went from 118 to 96. And guess what? There were people got up. Came into work, worked, and the price went what? Down. And as this goes down, I could be an observer and I could say, shit, at some point, this shit here is valuable. This shit's gotten too cheap. Now, what I just described to you, you get to decide if you want to participate in that at all. You could half ass do it, or I'll kind of understand it. Or you could pursue the process of trying to understand that. Trying to understand business. Big picture. Not, not how to fucking run quicken. Not, not, not how to uh, operate. No. I mean, just business. Big picture. How does Starbucks work? How many employees they got? Where are they based out of? What is their P.E.? What's the P.E. of Starbucks? What is a P.E.? Price to earnings ratio. Well, fundamentally, is that high or low compared to what it's normally? Right? Well, that's kind of based on the overall market. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, there's this thing called stock market. It's called SPY. Now, this represents five, the composite average of 500 stocks in America. 500 of them. 500 companies. You say, well, I don't know them. I bet you know most of them. I bet you don't know that. But if you were to pull up the list, if you were to get off your butt one day and start to study and open up the Bible of the SPY, and look and see who are the top 10 companies in the spy. And you say, well, how could I possibly know that, Gerald? Well, let's see. Go to Google. Top, and watch what happens. 10 stocks in the S&P. Hit the button. Boom. Based on market cap. What is it? Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. You see a pattern? You see a pattern? All of these guys make crackers, underwear, produce oil, make cheese, cut down trees. No, they don't do any of that, do they? What does that mean? Let me put you guys on lockdown. Let me shut down Instagram. You've lost the right to talk in church. Fucking evil you see what i see these are the top 10 companies in the sp 500 what do they all have in common well one is a search engine i'm on it right now just used it for my thing what is this social media i'm on it right now what about amazon shit the shit i ordered that i'm you're watching this through from amazon what about Microsoft? Well, that's the computer I'm on right now. What about Apple? I'm literally on an Apple iPhone. And I'm using NVIDIA. Every one of these eight companies I am actually using right now. And a guy says to me, Gerald, how do you pick stocks? And I say, open your eyes.
Just open your eyes. They're all around you. They're all around you. And we can take these and we can put them in the money flow. And what if I could show you when to know when Apple's cheap? And what if I could show you when to know when Microsoft is cheap? And what if I could show you to know when Facebook is cheap? Or what if I could tell you when Microsoft is expensive? Or what if I could tell you when Google was expensive? For certainty. You're like, yeah, that's expensive. That doesn't mean it's not going to keep going up, man. So as this comes down, watch, this is super important. As this comes down, guess what it's going to do? It's going to stop. I promise you. Always has since the beginning of time. Goes down, stops. Goes down, stops. Now, we could take this back to 1855 if you'd like. I don't know how much convincing you need. It's called history. Now, the government will tell you past performance is not indicative of future results, meaning what's happening here isn't necessarily what's going to happen. Yeah, no shit, Captain Obvious. But it does give us an indication. Now, if I said to you, hey, little Johnny, look at this. Get a marker and a ruler, and I want you to draw. I want you to do connect the dots. And we came over here, and I said, find the lowest lows of these little runs. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are. If you have my course, you know what they are. These little pivot points. Just draw them in, and some go up, and some go down, and some go up, and some go down. Now, we can know what they are after the fact. That's what makes, that's what makes trying to pick stocks so complicated. Boy, I wish it was easy. I'd be so fucking rich, you would not know me, and we would not be talking. But most likely, because I would own a tropical island, and that's where I would be right now. If I could predict the stock market at all consistently for any short period of time, I would be the richest man on planet Earth, because I know what to do. You could easily leverage yourself and make a fortune. But look at this. This is a monthly chart of the S&P 500. Months. 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 How many months you've been in the market? Can you count how long you've been in the market? I mean, I don't mean no bullshit like, well, I was investing in my 401k. I, 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 I get that. That's investing. 100%. If you have a match and not doing it, you're stupid. Sorry if that offends you. If you have a match at work and not participating in it, you're too stupid to be on this phone call. Like, you shouldn't be listening to me. You got you got to go back a few more steps. You cannot turn down free money while trying to simultaneously make money. That makes no sense whatsoever. Finally got my brother-in-law to see that. And he said, what do you mean? I said, listen, man. If I said to you, I'm going to give you a dollar. Or if I said to you, put down a dollar. And you put down a dollar. And then I put a dollar on top and say, here, put it back in your pocket. Would you say, no, I'm too busy. I got to go to work. The exchange makes no sense. Time times amount times yield. So if I can give you $100 and you just give me $100 and now I have $200. See, if you can't get past that, if you're struggling with that at work, you can't do this. You don't philosophically understand the process of gathering riches, of wealth, of building, and getting rich. Like, you're not an entrepreneur. You don't understand business. It's about money. If someone hands you the guaranteed money, easy money, here, and you can't take that, you can't play this. Right? Now, a lot of you are like, yeah, that makes sense. But some people are still struggling with that, man. So as you look at this chart, notice what you see. Work with me here. Little Johnny, do we seem to be at the top of this of this graph we're drawing? See the projection? We're just drawing it up. Now look what happened. We broke outside of it. And then I said, Little Johnny, connect the bottoms with a crayon. Now, don't be your mom and dad and start, well, I'm f on YouTube, there was this guy. And, well, you know, the like, don't do all of that. Just draw a line. Keep it simple. And... I want to show you something, John, little John. 
just as an observer, when price tends to get here or here, where was the best time to buy it? Come on, man. You see, you see it? You see it? You see it? This is, this is monthly. Follow me, man. That's one year of trading. Oh, man, I wish you understood what I was saying. I wish you were inside the money flow, man. People think, oh, I know the money. No, 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 you don't. No, you don't. You think you do? It's, it's fucking religion. I think you understand it. I hope you do. You should be trying to. Where are we at, man? Now, there are people with no skills who don't understand what I just showed you. They don't understand this pattern here that we haven't gotten into. This, what we call the four stages of price movement. This is how price moves. I didn't say that's how we interpret where it's going. We're like, we're fucking tarot card readers looking to think, oh, look at the video's going to go here. You don't know that. You have no, no fucking clue. Nobody does. And yet, these four stages can help us position ourselves to prosper. Because as a people, as a people, as a group, as a strategy, as a philosophy, I could what? Buy when I think things are cheap. And what? Sell when I think things are expensive. Or... Let's say that seems too hard. More efficiently apply our time, talent, our time and our mouth. Meaning we could, of times, when times are, when we, 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 we see a pattern of say, price sells off, goes sideways, and that when it goes sideways, we don't know if it's the bottom, but we know that's what they look like. And if as a person, I'm positioning myself, I want to position myself to do well over the next what? I don't know. When do you want to do well? What's reasonable time to you? Most people I mean, they don't have enough money. In the market, period. Your 30 becomes 15, which you didn't have much anyway. What's going to help you is time. Meaning over time, as price does what it does, running up, I still got to convince people of this, pulling back, running up, pulling back, running up. Now we could go to 1850 if that helps. I'll take it all the way back to 1850. Runs up, comes back. And every once in a while, it comes back too damn far. COVID. Why? Shit we've never seen. We can run this back and back. But here's the thing. Here's what a day does do for you, though. And a lot of people agree you got to have a long-term vision. But what if, what if in that vision, we could see? Oh man, I tried to do a video on that. You bastards didn't go like it or anything. Let's see. Let me pull it up. People are greedy. You're greedy with your time and your likes. I get people, they'll watch it. They don't click a button. They're busy. It's busy. Let's see. Where did I put it? Now listen to this based on what I was just saying. Money flow. Just the first part. It's the flow of the market. And much like the ocean, money flows in and money flows out. And at times, it can seem like chaos. 
out of that chaos, what if you could see? There's an old saying. It's hard to see the forest from the trees. Meaning we have to get above the treetop to see the big picture. And seeing the big picture is what the money flow trading system is all about. Ooh. So, the big picture. Oh, did I take it down? The big picture is what I showed you there on the monthly chart. This is the big picture. Yeah, it comes down. We have moments of terror. And here's the problem. This is your biggest struggle. Somewhere along the way, you got on the train. This is so important. God bless. Science of Getting Rich says the ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way. Those who do things in this certain way, whether on purpose, this is on purpose. This is on purpose. I'm purposely buying at certain times on purpose. On purpose. Right? So if I'm going to look at this, I want to buy or sell on purpose. Not on YouTuber. On purpose. Meaning I have a reason for what I'm doing. What's this reason? This is big picture. At some point in this big picture, you got on the train. Okay? Gary. Larry. Now you're here. Sorry if you got here right before this. Sorry if that hurts your feelings. I had a friend, I had a friend sell his business and collect $5 million. Now what I'm saying is big picture, man. I'm trying to expand your mind. When you get this, you will get rich. You can't get rich if you don't think rich. Thinking rich ain't about memes or fucking socks or cars. It's a state of mind. It's a being. It's a way of living. And the result of that is nice things. You can have nice things. You can own nice things. But you get to the nice things with the mindset. This, this is the big picture. Look. We just keep backing it up, man. Just back it up, man. Let's see. <clears throat> the year I was born, Dow Jones was 753. Going in, what, junior high? I'm what, 10? I want you to see something. Not that much higher. It's higher though, right? What's the trajectory? Up. But in the middle, in the day-to-day -day of price, it's doing this. In the day-to-day. -day, going sideways. Running up, right? Going sideways, pulling back, going sideways, running up, going sideways, pulling back. And sometimes it does it perfect, just like this. So here's what I do if I get these that run up into these what we call stage threes. We, we, we try to identify the stage of movement. Now, stage of movement isn't, a, it's not 100%. So we have six indicators that we look at to help us determine what, what stage are we in because based on the stage tells me what I should do. If I'm in a stage three, probably not a buyer, man. 
if I'm on a stage one and it's something that I want to own for the rest of my life because I believe over time asset prices go higher, guess what? I will sell that beach house I bought to someone else for more money. In the meantime, it might come down. Good. I can buy more beach houses. That's not, that's, that's big picture, man. Here's what's not big picture. I'm not going to buy one till it comes down. Then you say, what do you mean? Well, look, if I back it up to a monthly, these are months, right? Let's say these are months. You meet me, you're like, okay, Gerald, I buy into what you're saying and you start buying stocks. And you listen to me and you you see, oh, hey, Gerald's buying this REIT. Let's buy some of that. Why? Because, well, inside of these monthly, this is a month of movement. So what you're looking at here is like two years of price, right? Two years, man. And you come along and you read my free ebook and you join the game. And it's 2017 in the middle of the year. Where are we at today? Way over here. Here's the problem. It don't go straight up. And it don't give a shit when you decided to get on the train. Maybe you came sooner. You got on the train over here. And you're trugging along. And you got your 10, 20,000 in there. Whoop, down it goes, 40%. Boo-hoo. You buy some more. You start watching. You got two choices at that point. Tuck and turn tail. Keep the faith. Stay on the belief that over time, prices go up. If you own quality stocks, they will go higher and higher and higher. Netflix did not start at $500. So there are people that own, like, you get what I'm saying? Tesla did not start at $500. They go, they run up, they go sideways, they come down. Okay, Apple, Apple. You could go back. Peter Schiff tell you don't buy Apple. United States, fiat currency, they print and stuff. Going to be an economic collapse. Don't do it. Fucking Trump's president. Oh, wait, no, Obama's president. Like, there's a war. There's all this shit always going to happen. It's always the case. Every fucking day is Armageddon coming. My entire 21 years as an investor, every day has been the end of the fucking world. There's always a problem. There's always an idiot president. And it doesn't matter which party he's in. And there's always this existential threat. And there's always a fucking sickness. And there's always a looming bad economy. It hasn't been any for easy anyone. But as human beings, we think, oh, it's worse for us. You've never seen it. It's never been like this before. This is the worst the United States has ever been. Bullshit. When I was a kid, we stood in line for fucking months to get gas. But we didn't have Corona. People have a tendency to take this and make it that they are somehow special. So they come along and they get on the caboose right here. And they're investing, trading, investing, trading, investing, killing it, easy money. Oh wait, I found all about options. I'm going to take all my profits and go into the options game. And then what? Stock market collapses, falls for 40%. This guy here doesn't like it. But guess what? On that day, some new kid comes in, buys stocks for the first time. Guess what? Oh, this is easy. And then he catches himself a four or five month down. Now, the guy that's been on the caboose for a long time, he's seen this game before. It goes all the way back to 1850. Welcome to the show. You see why I can't fucking, for 10... Short comment, I'm like, bro, if you're about to start crying, I can't, I can't do it. You got to go study history. You need to get your shit together. You need to get your shit together. You thought getting rich was easy? There's a thing called a meme that says be greedy when other, other, man, I get people quote that shit to me all the time. Ah, damn, if you believe that, why aren't, why aren't you rich? What's the holdup? Because we've had a lot of crashes, a lot of, you know, boom. Like, what's the holdup? I'm always asking people that. What's the holdup? It don't matter if it's going up or down. You're supposed to be putting in. That's where people get it confused. They're like, well, the housing prices are expensive. I know. Guess what they'll be in the future? 
expensive. And guess what they'll be in the future from that? Expensive. They've been expensive your whole fucking life. And guess what they'll be later? Expensive. There is no magic day, magic time where the sh these assets are easy and free and the money's easy. No, it's always hard. And the moment it seems easy, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Now, what I need is a total fucking collapse. That's what I need. Because I'm a believer. So when that happens, I'm a buyer. I'll borrow against assets if I have to. Now, it ain't low enough for me to do that. This is nothing. This is nothing. Like, what we've had here, this, this baby stuff, man. Growth stocks fall 50% all the time, man. You just, you just start trading or something? Like, that's normal shit, man. Everybody likes that till they own the stock. Right? So you just got on the train at some point. And now you get a choice. As it pulls back, you get to be aggressive or you get to be fearful. That's your choice. What the money flow allows us to do is to be aggressive, not be fearful, and use the pattern of the, the rhythmic pattern of price. You, got, you know, I get these DMs all the time. You think this is a good spot to buy? I feel sad for him. Aw, he doesn't know. Hmm. They don't know. How easy they could know. In one hour, I could show them. <laughs> and they don't know. 28 fucking years on this earth. Can't tell if Bitcoin's cheap or not. If a stock is cheap or not. Is a REIT a good buy or not? Can't tell if this is a cheap price for Starbucks or not. That could be you. And if you are, I feel sorry for you. Because it's not that complicated. It's really easy. Now, something being a good value and on sale doesn't mean it's done going down. And so as I look at this, then I, I now have a tool of interpretation. I'm able to watch this, right? And so what I figured out is there's patterns. And, and what will help us is prices tend to move in, in waves. And we call these cycles. And if you look up here and they have these things called indicators and inside of the world of indicators, some indicators are oscillators. And if you don't know what that means, fucking don't let this day go by and you don't know the difference between a fucking indicator and an oscillator. Google it. The guy said to me, how do you pick winning stocks? Uh, Google. Open your eyes. Again. Oh, wait. Back to what, now, you see how we start to combine the philosophy that anybody can get rich, anybody in America, regardless of age or race or financial situation, if you begin to apply yourself to a basic set of principles and live by them and do it every day, every day you wake up, you're a goddamn candlestick. Where did they wake up? Oh, so this on this candlestick right here, that is the open of the stock market. It opened right there and turned and went this way. What does that tell you about Friday? It closed where? At the absolute low. Where do you think it'll open on Monday? Down. We're going down. We're going down. So if you're sad now, be prepared to get a lot sadder. Let me let you in on something. I'm reading my man's comment here on YouTube. I'm really hoping you're not selling quality growth stocks because they fell 70%. Falling, something going down in price 70% is not a reason to sell it. Could be a reason to buy a shit ton of it. I'd love to go back in time and buy the shit out of Tesla when it fell 70% or Netflix or Amazon or Google or Microsoft or Apple. Remember when Apple fired their CEO? I know. I don't know if you guys know this. They weren't always famous, great company. People used to hate them. They'd be in the news. There'd be all kinds of horrible shit said. Yeah, it's obvious now. It wasn't obvious then. It was hard then. This is where 
NASDAQ is going. This is where the SPY is going, I mean. It's going to its previous low. Now, there's a difference between there's a difference between Roku and a penny stock, right? Roku has the fourth largest traffic TV viewers in America, right? Or third. How could we know? How many people use Roku? As of third quarter 2021, sorry, I had to block somebody. Roku reported a total of around 56.4 million active users in the United States. The figure is the company's highest monthly active user total of all time. As the user base has almost doubled in just two years. Which way is Roku going? The stock. Straight down. Users have doubled. Users have doubled. And the share price is going down. Ha! <laughs> That's not weird. So you kill it. You double your subscriber base. You're growing. And the stock goes down. Now, work with me for a second. Let's play pretend. Let's play pretend. Pretend with me. Price moved sideways, ran up. Just, just pretend. I know you're smart and you got all this other shit to use, but just pretend with me. This happened. And price would move like this. And inside of this, over time, let's back it up. Back up. Over time, over a period of time, these things would go up. But moments are down. Now, I don't want to say all. That's not true. Not all houses go up. Some were shitty bit built, didn't stand the test of time, or a storm took them out. I've had property destroyed. I mean, real estate isn't the isn't infallible. Termites, winds, all kinds of shit can make a house go from very valuable to not very valuable real fast. Tree fall. I've had tornadoes hit houses. I've had whole sections where we had to rip out all subfloor, renters come out, flooring's ripped out, you spend thousands of dollars. And people say, well, use other people's money. Uh, that don't work during that time, bro. And you say, well, you could borrow it. And what if you can't? What if you own the house and you can't borrow any money and you don't have the savings and your kid got sick and your wife got a uh, terminal illness, like shit happens, life. That happens with assets. That's part of the risk of being an entrepreneur, being an investor. Three ways to get rich in America. Own a business, invest in business, or own real estate. This allows us to own a business without going out and starting a business. Bar none, the, the way to get the richest is, is the guy who started Roku is way richer than me and you. But we get to tag along. We get to play along. Let's say, now there's... Let's say that one day in the future, Roku comes back to $400. Now, as people say, nah, bro, that ain't happening. I know. They said that about a lot of stocks. Intel, Microsoft, Google, Apple. At one time, they were all going bust. 
Go look. Amazon too. Oh, and Ford. You say, Jared, what are you talking about? Yeah, even Ford. Remember Ford, $20 stock was $27. You remember when Ford was $4? Let's back it up. Remember when it was $4? <laughs> Even on this chart, this is what, 10 years, right? If we find the lowest low, where is it? Well, you got some low ones over here, but they're not the lowest. That's the lowest, right? And then the here. And what do you have? You know, basically, it goes from there to there. But it does it a long ways around, right? All that down and up. Right? If you bought it over here, you just got on the train. See, the market don't care when you get on the train. It's going through its movements, man. Up, down, up, down. Inside of those composite averages are stocks that go really high and really low. Like the individual stocks that make up. This is in the S&P 500, man. Inside of this, uh, what about, let's look at, uh, look at Activision. What is it, uh? Look at Activision. If you look at today's price, oh man. Now, just, just pretend, go with me. What if I told you when this is green and when this is red, now while not perfect, I'm really looking for a reason to be a buyer and I'm really looking for a reason to be a seller. And I said, apply that across all your assets. I didn't say you had to buy or sell. I said, as a general rule, when you were looking at assets, you like to buy them cheap and you like to sell them, what, higher or trim them. But inside of that buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell, as you grow assets, as you get richer, guess what? You know, when prices are running sideways and they're going up and the wind's at our back, most times stock market's going up. Yeah? You have moments of fleeting fear a year, year and a half, two years, prices come down. Shit subsides, things fix it, and a whole bunch of companies, everybody agrees, oh man, these are cheap. Can you believe it? Palantir's $9. That should be at least $28. Then it turns and runs. Well, guess what? When we get toward the next run, there will be another run, guys. And when we get near the top, your cousin will be brand new coming in the stock market, trying to figure out how to buy stocks, where to get ideas. Oh, they'll be like, I'm going to day trade. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you would have been here five, six, seven years, maybe 10 years. And you've witnessed a 50% decline. You've witnessed when the cigarette stocks get attacked and the government goes after them and passes new reg legislation and, and, and MO and Philip Morris fall by 50, 60, 70%. And you had a fucking choice. You could stay the camp or you could run. And you look at it and you go, well, it just represents a portion of my portfolio. What if it doesn't come like they think it's going to come? What if price went too far too fast? What if it went too low? And then it stops and puts in what looks like what we call a stage one. And if in that stage one, this asset is undervalued, guys. Like we can look at it and go, this is actually trading 20, 30% below value. Now that allows us what? Want to buy with confidence. It doesn't mean we know where it's going to go. I don't know it's going to turn around, but I know when these, when these six things line up, right? When price, the five day, 10 day, 20 day, that, 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 that are displayed as a moving average. And we didn't even talk about that. We're going to put one on there. And then I can come over these indicators. These, it, this one's oscillator, relative strength index. It's sitting there tracking 14 days. That's what this is doing. This shit you're taking for van, advantage, for granted, because you don't understand how this math formula works. You ever sit down and read it? You ever do it? Why not? 56 million people use Roku every day. You sell it. I'm looking to buy it. RSI math formula. The standard to use 14-day period to calculate the initial RSI. For example, imagining the market closed higher 7 out of the past 14 days with an average of gain of 1%. The remaining 7 days all closed lower with the loss, blah, blah, blah. Right? So you can go and read and see how this indicator is calculated. And what you'll find is when this shit goes above 70 in green, anticipate a reversal. 
This is when they happen. One side or the other. Now, let me take you a little deeper. If you have my course getting started with stock charts and we go a little bit deeper into this technical analysis, this is a completed move. Or often you'll hear me refer to it as a completed swing trade. It's done. In the world of trading, it's done. Now, I may not be trading it, but I can take my trading skills and I can apply them, which I am trading silver. This is silver. This is the triple leverage, the AGQ. It moves three times the price of silver. Why would you trade silver? I don't know. I think it's fun. I've been trading the gold. The, uh, 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 I do believe Bitcoin has replaced gold. Not 100%. Gold's still fucking huge. So is silver. So we keep playing them as long as they want to play. If the market opens, I'll look at it. That's the arrangement I have with silver. As long as it moves in a price pattern that I can interpret and I can take shots on stage ones inside of what we call the money flow, this pattern, I love to buy me some silver on stage ones. And you say, what if it goes lower? It's silver. It ain't going to zero. Good. I don't need to get stopped out. Take it down. We'll buy a little more silver. Oh, it's never coming back. So if we pull up a silver chart over the life of silver, could we play this game? If we look at this, what? Uh, this is two years. What's the general direction? There's the lowest low. And there's the, well, what was the highest high? It was actually right over here. But where are we at now? Like dead center middle, right? Dead center middle. If, if we believe in a general higher assets tend to trade higher as what? Inflation, more people. Now, if people decide they don't want to trade silver and it all goes to Ethereum or, 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 or Bitcoin, same rules apply. Or uranium or magic dust or fairy dust. I don't know. What do you want to trade? I didn't, I didn't create the shit. I'm just watching it. Right? And I have, I have money. I'm, I have money. I go work and I get money. I sell things and I get money. I collect rent and I get money. I collect dividends and I get money. And it's up to me where I allocate my money inside of the formula of time times amount times yield to ultimately what? Get to millionaire status. And there's different assets. And it's not just stocks, but stocks are easy. You can accumulate wealth very easy in stocks. It's not easy in real estate. Why? Or you'd have a bunch. It's fucking hard. This is easy. And if you learn this, as a general rule, you tend to pick up stage ones. And when you sell some, you tend to sell up in here so that you can roll it to buy more. Along the way, what? Markets move up and move down. And your money will come down and you'll, you'll put some in. Then it'll run up and you'll pull some off. And what do you do when you pull it off? I don't know. Go buy a house. I pulled 60000 out. What? Uh, month, two months, three months ago? August? What was it? August? Where's the market? I just shaved it across the board. When did I buy that shit? Two, three months ago. Now guess what? That timing's lucky, man. I mean, what do you mean? I'm playing the market today. So I needed 60 grand. Well, how do you think I got 60 grand to get? Uh, playing the game? Right? I was playing over here, and then what? COVID crash. What happened? Oh, a bunch of my shares went cheaper. What did we do? I worked. I sold things. I got money. Some stocks popped. I rolled them. I collected rents. I got dividends, and started buying shit. And then what? It goes on a fucking tear. This time, when we get back to where we were, I got more shares than I had down here, right? Or up here, I mean. So now we got, instead of having 20 shares of Roku, I got like 60, and then it runs, Right? Get what I'm saying? And you you what? Most of the time, markets go up, followed by periods of, oh, shit. A guy who got in with me here is in a different place than a guy who got in with me here. Would you agree to that? A guy who's known me for two, three years has got me in his ear going, bro, are you buying, are you buying this? Meaning two years ago, I'm like, you need to buy this. 
right now I'm like Hanes Brands, Hanes Brands. Why? Because two years from now, it's going to be up here. We're going to be in a new bull market. Market's flying. And what am I selling? Hanes Brands. And I've collected years of dividends with it. You know? And then what? Oh, shit moment. Oh, shit. Good. I need more Hanes Brands. Take it down, man. Oh, there's, in, there's, there's, there's supply chain problems. Good. I need supply chain problems. I, fuck. We want to buy it cheaper, right? So... The market is in a straight dive. Is that a bottom? N no. There's no bottom. So when you guys get in fucking aggressive, you're out of your mind. This is going straight down. So what do we do? Watch. What about shorting? Too late. Look. See how You see how knowing the money flow, knowing this, understanding the indicators and the moving... I just eliminated a whole bunch of things we could do. Should we short? Nope. Should we buy? Nope. What should we do? Go get some money. Right? Or be patient. Now, if you say, well, I don't have any to get. Well, that's a whole nother course. You need to be watching somebody else. You need to do some personal development, I guess. I don't know what to say. Like, do shit. I got off the phone yesterday with a guy who started driving for a... Uh, fuck, I forget what he was driving for. Oh, Instacart. Made 1800 bucks. He damns me. Hey, gee, I just put 300 in Bitcoin. I'm moving over 1100 What should I buy? <laughs> he wasn't asking. He knew. He knew what I would say, or I'm getting ready to buy. Then what do you? What does he do tomorrow? Same thing. What about the next day? Yeah, do it again. You, you know, like, what do you mean? Yeah, keep doing it. But what? But what? My wife says to me the other day. A guy, he had four houses. They're trying to figure out how to get number five. Collecting rent on four. Got a little stock portfolio going. This is his new hobby. He doesn't have that much money in it. Most of his money's in real estate. Good. That don't mean you can't watch this. God damn. What are you going to do? Stare at, you're going to put Arlo cameras up and just sit there and stare at your renters? No, this ain't got nothing to do with that. So what I began to do is this game here, I would take the money from the other things and put it into here. It's a storage. Yeah, the balance goes up and the balance goes down. We're not trading the fucking balance. We're trying to build positions within our portfolio so that over time they go up, man. We want to be, this is what we're worried about, selling into these days. And then guess what? In order to do that profitably, unfortunately, we need some of these days. Right? I mean, we can't, we can't walk around in our head thinking I'm always in the perfect spot and I'm somehow I'm magically like a fairy buying at the perfectly time at the bottom and like a magical human being, I'm selling at the zip. That, that's fucking nonsense. You got on the train. You got on the train. Now you're on it. Thing about this train is you can get off anytime you want. Click the button. Train goes up, train goes down. Now let me show you something. How green is that? Oh, you didn't know you could click a uh 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 you didn't know you could click your chart, go to a monthly. What does that mean inside the money flow? This is not a secret. There's a whole chapter on it. What does the RSI relative strength mean? When it goes green. Does it look anywhere near red? The fucking carnage that could come starting on Monday into the next week and the week after and the week after. If you're not coherent to that, if that somehow will freak you out, you got to go back a step. You're still working on personal development, not getting rich. You don't think sharks looking for the weak fish? Oh, he's looking for the toughest looking fish? No. Looking for the weak ones. In order for me to get rich, I need this. I need everyone scared. That's how you buy foreclosures. Someone's got to blow out, man. 
In order for me to get rich in Bitcoin, you know why? Because I didn't get it lower. I needed to go lower. It's the only way I'm going to get 10 of them, guys. I don't know how many you have. I'd like to have fucking 100 of them if I could. But I can't do that if there's 60,000. And I got people who put 500 bucks in and want it to go up. No, you don't. Go back to chapter one of the money flow and read how you get rich. Chapter one of the science of getting rich in the second paragraph says the ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way. This is a certain way. Guy says, what's your, it don't matter. This is certain. This is always buying bottoms. You say, well, it may not be the bottom. Okay, I'll buy the next one. And this is me knowing that over time prices go up. So if it's bad right now, it'll get better. Does that mean every single stock? No. But as a general rule, yes. If you don't believe that, get off the train. Settle that shit with yourself right now. And that's what's courage, man. The moment you get this and you're a zealot, you're sold the fuck out. It's a walking religion for you. Assets over time go up. Real estate over time goes up. People will pay me rent. All I have to do is understand the $1 buys five, $2 buys 10. And then all I need is good credit, find the fucking property, put the money down, and they will pay me. When you understand that, then it's just a matter of making yourself get up and go do it. That's it, man. This whole game is a conversation with you. It ain't what stock should I pick. Fuck, you're holding them in your hand. You're wearing them. You eat them. You're driving them. You live in them. Picking stocks is easy. That's not your problem. Man, I wish it was something as hard as that. Or as simple as that, picking stocks. Anybody know the top 20 stocks in America? Ain't no secret, man. Oh, by the way, they're collapsing right now. We have a, a rare opportunity. But what's funny, inside of my group, everybody goes quiet. You know what? Why? Because they don't actually understand how to get rich. They don't know. They thought it was they bring their little baby money in one time over here on this month. See, look. You've been with me a few months, you what? What's happened? This is super fucking important. What was this price right here? And it's worth emphasizing it with that word for anybody that bothers. It's that damn important, okay? September what? 11th, what? Of last year. Where's price? Right here. And there's a whole different group of story and problems and your account balance is different. And what happened? Price went, god damn, what's going on with my, hold on. What happened? I just bought a new computer. I didn't have time to set it up before it came out here. Where are we? Where are we? That's last year, September. We just broke it, man. We broke it. Where are we going? Down. If you're me, is that good or bad that the market's coming down? 51. Do I want high quality stocks higher or cheaper? If I have a belief that over time assets go up and I'm always buying, see, I'm always buying. The only guy who gets concerned about this is the guy who thought it was a one-time entry. I'm going to pay one price. I'm going to get on the train. Well, that guy... That, that's not how it works, man. It works over time. Put in, this is the point, this is the thing about these, these when you see, a, if you put $10,000, who would do that? You're using an illustration that is bullshit. Nobody puts in 10 grand, sits on fucking couch and waits 40 years. So you're not even using a scenario that's honest. Nobody would do that. Now imagine you put in 10 grand and then what? Next week, put in four grand. And then what? Next week, put in a hundred. And then what? Next week, put in what? And you just kept fucking doing that. Year after week after week, year after year. What happens in seven, eight years as you catch these big down moves? 
and your stack, your this is called position trading. That's not day trading. That's not what my friend, the professor does. We're doing something different. And inside of there, what? Price goes what? Up and down. What do I do with gains over here? I take these and what am I doing? I'm looking for other assets. But I'm on the train. Look, I'm on the train. What might happen? It might get run off the track. And then what? I keep doing it. And then what? Over time, your balance goes higher and higher and higher and higher. And then the next time you have a generational collapse, it looks a hell of a lot scarier than your first one. My first one, I had $30,000 in stock market and it fell to like 14 grand. And I panicked. And I sold shit that went on to go up 10x. There were people that sold Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Facebook in 2008. Never bought them back. And they sold them to avoid a little loss. And then what? Went and did something else. Oh, I don't like these stocks. I hear them all the time. I'm a professional real estate investor. Real estate market's filled with stock losers. Oh, I got into real estate because stock market's rigged. No, you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. That's what was rigged. You just chose to go learn to do something else. Now you know what you're doing. What if you knew what you were doing in both of them? What if as you were doing it in the stock market, you decide to take some of your profits and you bought a rental property? Market's booming. Instead of being greedy and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and buying options and pushing it and leaving, you're just pushing it. You cut some off and go do what? Start a business. Pay off a, 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 you know, when people think of doing that though, when the market's collapsing at just the time they should be buying, they're looking for an excuse to get out and they do it the opposite. So no, I don't want any real estate right now. You know what I want? Fucking stocks. They're on sale. As they come down, that's really what I want. Why? And I'll let my real estate buy them because I bought the real estate with wins after buying a bunch and then we run up, oh, pull some off, go buy some houses. Why? So I have fucking money to buy here, to then buy, sell some here, to then what? Buy here. As we go through life and nobody's ever told you that. Nobody's ever told you that. Nobody's ever explained what I just said. And if you don't know that, when these happen, you don't make the right move and you fuck it up. I meet guys all the time and when they decide to get back in, the market's done this and it's been a great two, three years and they're like, man, I think I'm going to get back in the stock market and then it blows out and they go, fuck that, I'm back in real estate and then it starts going again and it's like, why aren't you in both and managing both like a fucking professional? Manage both. It's not all in, all out. It's a, you own all these different things, man. And there's people right now in here listening to me, don't own Bitcoin. I cannot comprehend that. I didn't say you put it all into Bitcoin. I said you own some Bitcoin. It's going down. So if I took you back, you remember this one? Price ran up to what? 22000 Fell to what? 13, 14? That was a big one. Then what? Ran up, what, 15? Came to what? Four? Don't look like it on this chart, but that's 15 to four. What's that look a lot? 60, 70%? Then what? Runs up, and what? You start getting in Bitcoin. Then what? Down it goes, right? Started to go again. Now we're going down. Where are we likely going? Shit, we might go all the way. This is now, this is, you know, farther back chart. I doubt we go that low, but we could. Why not? Is that going to change your thesis? Is that what it takes to get you off the train or would that get you excited? Because wouldn't it, wouldn't it still be going up over time? Right? Even if it came to say 25 and then turn headed higher, wouldn't that be following the same trajectory of the last decade? Right? We don't know. We don't know. But that's what I'm playing. 
that over time assets go up. If if you don't believe in it as an asset class, then you get off the train. You can't play that. You know, am I buying now? No, but I am looking to be a buyer, but I haven't. I would nibble. I wouldn't put any real money to work. I would nibble though. I would definitely nibble. I mean, you can't go wrong buying on low RSIs, man, just as a general rule. I mean, even though that wasn't the bottom, I was buying that one. If you're just as a general rule, you buy bottoms, right? And then what? When it turns, what? If you're going to sell, you what? Sell into tops, right? So if we're looking at the pattern of the money flow, what are we doing? We see sell-offs. We want to buy into ones. How do you ruin yourself? You go all in. Because now if you're wrong, you don't just have a bad position. You're fucked. I would never pay you to do that to me. Meaning, if, if I was paying you to run your money or your mother's money, you wouldn't do that. You'd be like, what? Well, you want to diversify. If your mom had two million bucks, you'd be like, well, you probably, you should know exactly what to do with that money. If I handed you $2 million, you should be getting, I don't know, fourteen to 20000 a month in dividends. Like it, 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 and you say, well, I don't know what I'd put it in. Then you're fucking up right now. If you don't know what you'd put it in tomorrow, you don't know what you're doing today. And if you can't know, then you're not going to, no wonder. Like, you're not going to get there if you can't see it or know what to do now. Right? Does that make sense? So what you think about comes about what you focus on grows. My point is it's fractal. So if you started, you got some money in REITs right now, right? You say, well, how, how, how much? I don't know. Put $100 in there. And then what? Then a grand. And then what? 10 grand. And then what? 50 fucking grand. As you go forward in life. Hmm. Look at Haynes Brands. I got to wait now, right? What's the money flow say? So we got to go through the six indicators. Where are the moving averages? They're pointing down. All right. Is RSI extreme? No. What does that mean? It means it can go lower. It can keep going till that is extreme. And you say, what do you mean? Well... Almost got extreme here. That was the bottom. Almost got extreme here. That was the bottom. Oh, you know, just barely got extreme here. That was the bottom. So that's a pretty good indicator that you're buying the bottom, at least in the meantime. Right? So as an accumulator, do you see how the RSI kept me on the right side? Right? I mean, I definitely want to be an accumulator on this side. Where would I want to be a seller? Into extreme RSI. What the fuck? Sorry. You get what I'm saying? As a general rule, as we interpret the money flow, this right here, as I look at the four stages and I look at Haynes Brands, which is a stock that I want to own. I like the story. I like the dividend. I like the problems they're having. It's inexpensive into a inflationary environment. Yeah, it's going to go up, but it's a lot cheaper than Gucci. Okay. And so what is that? That's that blue collar play. That's my where my mind is, man. I'm a blue collar millionaire. I'm not looking at the high end. I'm looking at what do average folks need? Walmart, Target, Haynes Brands, McDonald's, Verizon, International Paper. They make basic proc, you know, Procter and Gamble, Uber. So when I get into the high, what are the high risk growth uh, options? Uh, Uber. Is this, this is not, come on, Uber. Millions of people use Uber. How many? How many people, watch, this is how easy this is, people use Uber. Watch this. This is what I've been saying. In the fourth quarter of 2021, or 20, 93 million people use the Uber app 
on a monthly basis, 93 million. If you could raise the price one dollar, it's a billion dollars a year from an app for a business that you don't own any vehicles, nothing to warehouse, nothing to fix. Think of that. Connecting, transportation, the most basic of human needs. Think about that. Look where this stock is. We're backing up on a weekly. Is it expensive? Nah. The value of the company is about $68. At one time, it ran to 60 When it did that, it was overvalued. It got ahead of itself. That's very common. That's how these things work, right? Now it's coming down. But as Uber comes down, as Roku comes down, as SoFi comes down, as these stocks come down and we're on the train and we're on the downside of the movement of the train or what other or what is referred to as the four stages of price movement, if we want to be millionaires, if we want to get rich, we have to be able to step back, think outside the box and realize pillar number one, how you think is everything. Pillar number one, 10 pillars of success has nothing to do with charts. It has to do with life. How you think about the things in life has a great relate uh, to what happens or how you respond to it, right? And so I don't know price movement. I don't know where it's going to go. I do believe in capitalism and America. And I believe that assets over time appreciate and produce cash flow or assets that do appreciate and produce cash flow over time drift higher. If they're appreciable assets, meaning the under, the thing they're connected to underneath, there's a path for it to go higher based on earnings or based on the value of its holdings, based on its distributions, based on its royalties, based on just our trust as human beings. Like we, the Bitcoin story is not about earnings to ratio. So if you're trying to analyze Bitcoin based on, you know, traditional stock market metrics, that you probably don't understand anyway, but let's say you're a smarty pants and you do understand and you're like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. No shit. No shit. It's not, it's not what it is. You're investing in a protocol, man. It's not a business. It's a protocol like Java or HTML, the shit that allowed the internet to run. We didn't get a chance to invest in that. You could invest in layer two, Google, Facebook, Right, but layer one, Napster, shit like that, the, the protocols that created email and Java and all the programming languages that allow you to see video and allow you to see shit on your computer that none of you understand. You couldn't invest in that, man. You can now. If it works. If it works. So Ethereum is the HTML, the code that made the internet work. That's Ethereum. Right? If you don't believe that, yeah, you can't play that asset class. So here's what you got to do. If you do, you step back, right? What's pillar number, what is it, seven? See the big picture? And you go, okay, if this is be true, how do I utilize this asset to grow my wealth? I'm not talking trading. Go trade. Do that all you want. If you put all your assets into trading, at some point, you will go broke. I talk about this in my book. You don't have to die broke. You will go broke. If you don't have assets making you 10, 15% a year, just consistently over time. And what that looks like is it runs up 40, pulls back 20, runs up 30, comes down 40. And over time, it generates a return. If you don't have assets doing that, you will die poor. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Because even if you make money on the NFT, you will do the wrong thing with it and you'll be holding a bunch because you're fucking greedy and you're holding a bunch when the market collapses and you didn't diversify. And when it was doing well, you didn't take off and you bought into the high and not the low, right? People are going to make the money in, in NFTs is the next generation. After all you guys blow out and all that gets settled, how it actually works, then I'm going to step in. What's actually valuable? I've seen this game before. First round of cryptos, everyone got fucked. It's not going to happen this time. 
First round of tech stocks. Everyone got fucked. And a few survived. Amazon. That's going to happen to you. You watch. First round of everything, of technology, they always get screwed. The second layer, tier two, they begin to kind of figure it out. The Facebooks, the Googles. See, there were search engines before Google. There were search engines before Google. I've traveled America to talk with the trading. One of the great things about trading is that it can be done from anywhere, any location on earth. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need five or six computer monitors. You can do it with a phone. You don't need a college degree. You don't need a suit. You don't need to understand complicated technical jargon. But you will need a desire to win, a desire to be successful. And sometimes you just need a little help. And I believe that I can help you. I've helped thousands of people all over the world. Get <laughs> nice. Uh, good stuff. Good job, Gerald. Let's see. Now notice the pattern of Uber. I'm position trading Uber. I'm trying to, my goal is 1,000 shares. How long will that take you, Gerald? I don't know. That's my goal. I got other things in life. I got other responsibilities. I got other things going. But in the meantime, I'd, it, what would help my goal if I could get this a little bit lower? If I could get this at $25, I'd be forever fucking grateful. Please, God, that is my prayer to you. Now, some of you won't share that sentiment with me. I believe this, and I believe that Uber's going to go through this 50 times before I sell it and make my money. Maybe not 50. Let's say 12. There's going to be 12 stage ones, four-month run-up, a couple months sideways, you know, five, six months down, a couple months, and then you got a year. Maybe you get two of these in a year. That's what people don't understand. You might get two of these in a year. Maybe you get lucky and it goes faster and you get five or six. But let's look at Pepsi. Has it given you five or six? Let's look. Let's look. I own a shit ton of Pepsi. This is my second largest holding. Well, I've owned it since, you know, way back. <laughs> when did you get on the train? So there's somebody, there's somebody right here. They are like, dude, are you crazy? Pepsi is 80 fucking dollars. I am not paying $80. I could have bought it for 50. You're paying 80. Are you crazy? And months go by and there's about a year. And guess what? They're like, this asset has not returned any money. There's the cost of learning. And then they get real fancy with you. There's the con. Your money, actually, you can lose money by not having it invested in the right thing. And then, so during that year, well, look at this. It falls all the way to 60. And they're like, uh, the cost of holding, I told you, you shouldn't own that. And it fell from, what was it, 80-something dollars, maybe like 30, 40% down, right? Remember that? You remember that? And they're like, oh, I told you, you should have put your money into it. That's what they do, man. I get these lectures all the time from kids with your formulas. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Here's what I know. Watch this. I'm just a simple guy. How many, can, how many ounces of Pepsi, Pepsi are sold each year worldwide worldwide let's see oh that that number was too big that was too big they couldn't calculate it hold on so 
So, well, they don't even have it, man. 2018, it was 29 billion. It's a lot more than that. I don't know why it's not coming up. I'm confusing them. I guess there's so few people searching that. It's not even searched that often. Good. Don't search for it. Don't think about it. Go buy something else. I'll buy it. And so, as it's done this little thing, what happened? Over time, assets to produce cash flow, businesses appreciate over time. And all the time, every one of these moments, what happened? Should buy it. Should you buy it now? No. If anything, I would trim it now, right? What? To add to something else? Because inside of this movement, this what you see here is this going on. Sideways, right? Up, sideways, down, right? Sideways, and then what runs up, and then what day on a daily chart, right? This, that's what we're seeing. This, this on a daily chart. And if you got on the train on Pepsi, depending on when you got on the train, when the market gets hit, <laughs> right? So you have to forgive me when, when people make their decision based on the price, and I giggle a little. Okay, mister, I've been in the market for 18 months. You think that's how it works? You get it? That's the same in Bitcoin, right? Now, if you're playing in tier one, new shit could get wiped out. It's a different game. There's a difference between a biotech stock Stage one trials, trying to create a drug, right? And Pfizer. <laughs> Look at this Pfizer pattern, guys. Just side note. Now, the purpose of Sunday service is to get you thinking the money flow way in general, not specifics. And I, have, I actually literally care less what stock you want to talk about. It doesn't mean shit. It's this pattern. Now, inside of this movement of sideways up, sideways down, there are commonalities. And that's where we get into the book. And that's not the stuff that excites me because that's easy, man. You know, this line represents the, the direction, but you see how it's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's price moving. And the line represents the 20-day moving average, which is 20 composite days, which is one month of trading. There's markets open five days a week. There are five trading days in a week, right? So if you notice, when you look on this chart, you're going to see what? That little red dotted line. Now, these are the, just the technicals of chalk trading. That's five days. That's one week. One bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar. That represents one week. And if you look, price was here. Price closed up here. That's a straight line. So what do you see the dots doing? They're going higher and higher and higher and higher. And even when price dropped and touched it, we can say, though, the average price is the that one week is higher than the two week, which is higher than the 20 day. And that's just math. That's just numbers. You can just look at it and see it going higher and higher. Now, you could go read something and come up with a reason and formulate and think, well, I think Biden's a dipshit and I think this is going to happen and I think that could happen. So I'm going to go blah, blah, blah and make, make a bet. Okay. But what if we waited until these inverted? And as a general discussion, if you look at this, what do you see? What's, what's happening now? It's inverted. You got a five day, 10 day, 20 day. They're all pointing down, right? They're all headed down until what we know until this goes extreme. Then what price is going to go sideways. And that's what we saw over here. And inside of that, there's a fundamental value of Pfizer and it can go lower and lower and lower. Even though now remember here, here's the funny part. Pfizer is working on the drugs that everyone's going to take, which seems like forever. Booster after booster after booster. They've now sold shit tons, billions. And it was going down while they were developing that. Guess what else is going down while they're doing better? Uber. Guess what else is going down while they're doing better? Roku. Guess what else is going down while it's doing better? P Palantir. Guess what else is going down while they're doing better? DraftKings. 
Well, that's a perfect storm, don't you think? Sorry, I had a little emergency there. <clears throat> we'll wrap this up. But something I want to leave you with. Something I want to leave you with. As far as the technicals of all this stuff, if, if you go to my Instagram story or just click my bio link anywhere, I have that course, Getting Started with Stock Charts. That doesn't mean the website stock charts. I'm talking about stock charts. Charts of stocks. Pfizer will always float. It pays a dividend. They just increased it. That means the stock price can go higher. If a company continues to raise their dividend, the price of the stock will drift higher over time. Take a stock like 3M. Now, that's that's not perfect matchup there, okay? But as a general rule, I'm saying. And then it'll move inside of these stages. And as a buy and holder, let's say I own IRM, Iron Mountain. This is a cloud company. Cloud storage is here. Now, I've owned this stock for many years. Not many years. What did we start buying this last? Hold on. Let me pull it up over here. This is important. And then I'll let you go. I know the money flow is an unusual class. And it's more mindset than anything because I think that's so important. If you don't see the big picture, if you don't see the mindset, if you don't get that price moves naturally and comfortably through the four stages and we need that and you can't be so fucking selfish as they will. Once I got on the train, it's just blue skies. That's not even, that's not how it works and it's not what's going to make you money. Okay? You're not some extra, I mean, this, well, I'll save that for another. What's going to make our money in something like this is we're buying these stages. And price, given certain headwinds, wants to move higher if it's undervalued. If it's not undervalued, it doesn't want to move higher. It starts to want to move lower. Okay? Why? Because investors want a discount. And there's forces that are outside of Iron Mountain. There are things like interest rates. There are things like COVID. There are things like uh, uh, competition. There are things that move prices. And often those things are based on fear and greed. And if someone needs money to buy a beach house, they might sell the shares. And that has nothing to do with the underlying business itself, right? And because of a certain particular environment, you could have a stock like a Palantir and Uber that's doing the best it's ever done go down. What that allows you to do is A, ignore it, go about your day and keep doing what you were going to do. Two, you could take advantage of it. And three, if you were just so bothered by it, <clears throat> you could create rules whereby you try to hedge or play the short side. That's fine. Teach it in the book. How to short. If that's what you want to do. I'm an optimist. And I love owning things. I love owning things more than I love trading. 
So I'm always looking to buy and to accumulate and to buy quality things on sale. And then my money comes from selling those things into strength so that I can then buy other things. So all these stocks, I, I didn't buy all these, man. Some of them were shit ran up. I cut some off. I collect some dividends. I collect some, I put it in there. I take a position in this. It runs up. I trim some off, right? And as I, and then I put money in. And as I play forward, you go from eight stocks to 40 stocks and then compounding happens and years later you got not, you know, it just grows and the numbers get bigger and the run-ups get bigger and the number of share count gets bigger as you expand, as you push yourself into that. It's not a one day thing. It's not if I put $10,000 in, do nothing. That's why I hate those illustrations. This is the illustration, not some arbitrary single moment of putting something in over a period of time. Now that does explain compounding. But now, now when you understand that concept and you begin to target things, stocks, assets, asset classes, could be land, could be whatever, businesses, it could be leveraging your time and your talent, right? That's inside of this. There's going to be times where your talent's not in use and you may be, you personally are in a stage four decline, right? This is life. This is how assets move. And inside of these assets are people. People work there. You know, people that work at Iron Mountain, I assure you, are not selling their shares. If anything, they're looking to buy them. This is good for them. If they need this if they're getting them free. Imagine if you're getting them free and you get them free every time it's low. Fuck, if I, I wish I could tell them when to give them to me. And every time RSI went below 30, I call Human Resources. Hey, can I start getting that drip again? Fuck, I wish I had a phone number I could call and they just gave me shares. This is the only time I would want them. I don't want them up here. I'm getting rid of them up there. <laughs> right? Or keeping them, but I'm damn sure not buying them. Right? So I don't want to buy this. So if I look at Pepsi right now, is that a deal for me? Look at it. Should I be investing my money right now in Pepsi Cola? No. What would I do if I own it? Nothing. Nothing. It's just an asset that I own. And you go, well, maybe sell it. Why? Look at the big picture. Well, to do what? To buy something that's going to just keep going up? I uh, already own that. Look. Look at BX. I've been telling people this to buy this. It's been in my newsletter since I started posting on Instagram. If you go look, you'll see my buy and hold, right? This is important. Let's go through this real quick. Now, this is not trading, but it's important. Where are we at? So, Pepsi, 18750 I'm up. It says 116%. Now, I've sold some along the way. I think I started, you know, I got it to like 150 shares. It ran. And then at a certain point, you got to stop because you don't want to lose your position. So I want to keep that 100 shares. Now, look, I'm at 103. Those probably came from dividends. Click it. So look, what do you see? 2013, 15, we had a, there was a stock market scare over in here. 2015. So that's when I started accumulating it. <laughs> I was paying $63 a share. Um, where are we at now? Let's see. Let's look at Pepsi. That's not a deal, right? At all. Where's BX? Now, which crashes should I have got out of this stock? <laughs> None of them. <laughs> I mean... Since, since I've been buying this in 2012, which stage four should I have sold? None of them. Look, all I should have been doing is buying more, right? Look how easy that would have been. It's not one, guys. There's bunches of them. Some are, look, McDonald's 120. Like some of these, like, so I'm, I'm doing Hanes brands. So I started doing it before and I got up, I was up like 20, 30%. Well, it started to pull back. Good. I'm trying to get to 1,000 shares, man. Right? I need it to pull back. Good. I don't give a fuck what the reason is. Interest rate cuts, tech crash, whatever. 
uh, could be Chinese stop run out of, maybe we run out of cotton. They got to change the material. I don't know what it's going to be. That's going to get this down, but I need it down, man. Right. So I can buy some. This is the business that I'm in. Right. When do I want to sell some up in here? So what were we selling some Exxon here recently? Why? Cause it was running out, man. Look, it's still going, man. Good. I trim what I'm a trim. Now I just sit on it. When do I want to buy this? Next time it's on sale. When's that? I don't know. In the meantime, they're going to throw me some dividends. Well, I didn't start out with them, you know, having as many shares. I bought 10 and I bought 10 when they were on a stage one. So when do I want to buy this? Stage ones. All right. Which ones do I want to sell? None. Fuck out of here. Buy, right? I'm looking to buy stage ones. How can you tell? Uh, the price, it looks like it. You, know, you see what I'm saying? You see it? You see it? So if, if I do get, now, do you want to sell every run up? No, you got 20 shares. Come on. That's not what you need. You need money. You got to get money in your account. You fucking just sit on that. You got a winner. Sit on it. Go get new money and what? Buy. So yeah, could you, okay. Could you sell two shares? Yeah. You get 150 bucks and then you add 150. That's 300. And then you go buy IRM. Why? It's cheap. It's below the 200, pays like a 7% dividend yield. It's on an extreme and it's starting to put in a stage one box. So as I'm looking at this, now I was on, I need to get more Haynes brands. But look what's happened. This stock has now benefited from the interest rate scare and the tech sell off. Do you see what's happening? So I may have to change my thesis. Why? This stock pays a bigger dividend than Haynes brands. I'll come back to it later. <laughs> see what I was, look. So when I put, you know, $100 in there on Monday, shit, I might be needing two shares of this. This could play out for four or five months. Two here, five there, 10 there, six here, over there. Guess what happens? Down the road. You got 18 grand, right? I didn't buy 18 grand in Pepsi. Look, I bought 30 shares, 25 shares, 15 shares, 10. Now I was buying in bigger number then because you got charged on every transaction. You don't now. Fuck now. I'll buy one today, one tomorrow, two the next day, one the next. In the past, I would have bought 10 shares. So that was a $600 buy. That's a $900 buy. That's a $1,200 buy. That's a what? And what returns are on those? 135, 200. But I haven't sold them. I'm just collecting the money on it. Right? Why? It's going to keep going higher. It'll be $400 one day. You know? So as we watch and we go through these, okay, if I'm putting money in here tomorrow, which I need to, I got till April 15th to get money in here and I'm trying to get fucking rich. So as I'm watching these every day, what is these? This is assisted living, right? We could go read up on well, go read up on, but let's pull up well. Look at well, where's the chart? Do I want to put any money into well? Now I'm getting a dividend too. So I'm collecting like $800 a year from this company. So back it up. Look at this chart. Does that look exciting? Now I look near the top, right? That ain't, a, right? Has it been here before? Yeah, every time it gets there, it stops going up. So I'm not jumping at this. So if I go to tip ranks, now I'm not making an argument to sell it, but I'm trying to rule out buying it right now. So I go look at, uh, let's see, well, what do they think it's worth? 96 bucks. I, that ain't that ain't much, and if I look at the chart, where is it? It's a stage three, man. So it's a stage three with ten percent upside, which probably means it sells off, and then we get twenty percent below value. Now that might be something worth looking at, right? So if we look at Iron Mountain, see how I'm doing this. So tomorrow I got to put money in my account. I got to run through all of these stocks. Which ones are stage ones that could be valuable? Iron Mountain, strong buy, 18% upside. So, shit, I know I'm buying that over, over well. And it's meeting what other criteria? It's below 30 RSI, possibly setting up a box, stopping where it stopped before. Has the momentum turned? Yes. Has Chestix broke out? No, but it's starting to look that way. So if I got $100 tomorrow, I could buy two shares right here, right? Or five or 10. When am I selling this? Oh, a long fucking time from now. Why? I'm building up that passive, right? That's a different game, man. And so that game's being played out with way more money, you know? And this is in like 60, 70 positions. So as I go through the stock market, I'm scanning my 77 
dividend stocks that, you know, some are down here. Look how you say it. Why do you have so little? I just started, got on the, just got on the train. I just got on the train for these. When did you get on the train for these? Long time ago. And they told me, oh, you should sell all these. Stock market's going to crash. Wait, it's going to crash, 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 All the way down, down to here. The guy just got on the train here. And look, now he's down. You know, see what I'm saying? How do we get that green? Well, let's see. VTRS. What's that worth? VTRS. It's only $3,000. Newer position, right? 61% upside. Pays a dividend. And they got a $61 upside. $23 target. So if I look at this, now look at that chart. VTRS. See why I can't add to it? It's undervalued, right? It's undervalued, but look at the chart. I can't add to this. Where was the play? Right here. What else does this open up as I just described to you what I do every day for 77 different stocks? Now, I do this for some non-dividend paying stocks, and those are called position trades because at some point I will let them go some point I will sell Uber, most likely. I don't have that same pressure to sell this. Now, unless I think Uber's going to keep going, they re-raise the valuation, but I'll probably downsize Uber to say a lot less. And then when it goes into pullback stage, if there's room to the upside, it may come a play again. And that's been going on with, you could have been playing this game with Tesla. All you got, man, people are getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. Fuck, man. You didn't have to do that. You could have just played the money flow and had faith. Huh? How about try that? How about just stick with it? How about don't be a little bitch? Just stick with it. So Campbell's, I've owned this a long time. Guess what? With inside this portfolio, some shit's not going to do as well. So I'm down right now 33% Bitcoin. I was up 44%. That's a big swing. But I'm not playing for today. It's just one position inside of there. Good. It ain't that big anyway. There's plenty of room before it becomes too big for my portfolio, Right? Good. Let's buy some. Let's pick it up, man. So when do I want to buy Bitcoin and ARK? <laughs> when? Right now, ARK's in my buy and hold, right? Why? That's a simple way to put a bunch of growth stocks in your buy and hold without filling it with the stock. So that way you can buy dividends. So this is one position. It's going down. Good. 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 Hope they take it so low. You all puke it out. Never talk to me again. Unfollow and go away. That's how I'm going to get rich. The only way for me to get a lot of Uber is a lot, it's got to either get cheaper or I got to get some more money. That's the only two ways I can see it. The only way I can see for me to get 10 Bitcoins is the price gets really cheap or I come into a lot of money. And if I could do a little of both, it gets cheaper and I get some money. That's a kind of a happy medium, right? Oh my God. He said, your game plan is the same as mine. I know I, I try to refrain from that, but. It's true. I tell myself this all the time, dude. I sit myself down and I say, Gerald, are you being a little bitch or did you actually have reason to be concerned? Ask yourself, because there's a difference. There's a difference between it's hard and impossible, right? There's a difference between this sucks right now and this is fucked forever. There's a difference, right? We've lost the war and we need to retreat for a minute or reevaluate or, or maybe we just need to toughen up and deal with it, man. Maybe we need to go and remind ourselves what did Henry Ford do in the Great Depression? What did, what did, what did, you know, obviously we're not Henry Ford and I'm not Steve Jobs and you're not Warren Buffett, but these are people that we can look to. And I can look to my own past. What did I do when this happened to me in Ford? What did I do? You know, I can go look to that, right? And I can say, fuck, I know what I should have done, right? But this is what the money flow allows you to do. This, 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 this religion, this idea. And I, you know, I have people take shots at it and say, "Oh, you're not. Maybe you're not right. Good, whatever, dude. You go believe that. I believe that most of the time. Maybe it's not seventy-one. Maybe it's fifty-eight point two. I don't know. But most of the time, assets go up. And I mean, real businesses: Johnson Johnson, Pepsi, and there's small caps that are real businesses. Bed Bath and Beyond is a real business. Foot Locker is a real business. 
You know, Kohl's is a real business. And you say, well, Kohl's is never going to go to $200. No, but when Kohl's strips messes up, CEO messes up, sales are bad, you can step in. And there comes a point when even shitty assets get cheap. There's a time when the ghetto is so cheap that it should be bought. And some of those ghettos properties will be will be turned into amazing properties. And some won't. And some of your penny stocks won't come back. And you're going to eat it. Okay? You don't think... You think you're the first one? You don't think Warren Buffett's eight stocks? So what would he do? You think Kathy Woods is sitting around fucking worried about what a bunch of YouTubers think? No, at all. What is she doing? Holding her faith. And I watch these idiots on television try to make fun of her. And some of my followers do it. Block. You don't even run a fund. You don't even have a million dollars. Why don't we talk about that before we make fun of her? Let's talk about what you risked. And there's a guy the other day started talking shit about Warren Buffett. I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? You're not even in the same fucking class it, on any level. Like, are you out of your mind? That's like making fun of Michael Jordan or something. Like, oh, he wasn't a good basketball player. What? Even if you don't like the guy, you can't deny it, right? So the point is, you don't want to be a hater of that. You want to embrace that. What could Kathy Woods teach me right now? Huh? Funny. She never texts me concerned. What does she do? She's buying DraftKings, Palantir, right? What is she doing? Sticking to her guns. I wish I had half that courage. I wish I had half the courage. I wish I had half her money. Uh, let's be, keep it real. I got no choice. I have no choice. I gotta keep buying these assets. I gotta get my personal life together. I gotta keep my credit clean. I gotta be smart with debt. I gotta surround myself with like-minded people. I've got to control what goes into my mind and what I listen to, what I put my time on, and who I put my trust in. I have to be very careful of people around me, friends around me, the things I talk about, the self-talk, the things I say to myself when I'm alone, when nobody's watching, I need to fix that. I need to be more positive. I need to look for positive people and I need to avoid fear. Yeah, fear's real. Things happen, but I need to be on top of it. I'm a shark. So are you, if you want to be. So few people are. I get to use this to my advantage. And I promise you, I promise you, this time next year when we're on this live, I'm going to be richer, smarter. I'm going to have more money in my stock account. I'm going to own that second Bitcoin. They're giving me a chance. Thank you, God. I'm going to have that second Bitcoin. I'm going to have those 12 Ethereum coins. I, I didn't get a chance to get it on the last run, but I'm going to get it on this one. I don't know how long that takes. Hopefully, like two years. I'm going to get another beach house. I'm fucking greedy. I'm going to sell a thousand books. I'm going to record a hundred podcasts. I'm going to write another book. These are just the intangibles, man. You are too. You can't comprehend or keep up with all the things you're going to do next year. You're going to be shocked. You get on real estate, like I talk about, and combine it with stocks and this, the money flow. Go read. If you have my free ebook, it's free. It's free. Fuck, dude. Go read chapter five. If you follow me on OnlyFans, I put this on there. I get I, people laugh at me always on OnlyFans. Uh, listen, asshole. I'm trying to find a way to communicate with people that isn't getting censored or blocked. And I don't know if you know this, but Instagram is starting to do that. And if I call someone a name, it's considered hate. If I say don't be a little, and I say it, 
They consider that a hate speech. That's so stupid. But it's where we are, man. So I got to work with what I have. All right? So you make fun of that. I'm going to get up and just go get it. Because I've been called to put it out, to teach it any way I can. I'll try it different ways. I'll yell. I'll yell. I curse. Whatever. Whatever. If I can get you to listen, whatever. Because why? That's what gets me to my goal. I'm looking for certain people. And guess what they're looking for? Same thing. And when those people come together, there's there's power in a group. So me being accountable to other people and them accountable to me, in theory, keeps me going. Right? So I'm 51. It's fucking easy. You get up every day, push on this. Like, it's not easy, man. People call in problems. Go get yourself 17 rentals. You tell me how it works. Make your money exclusively trading and investing in the markets. And let me know how that goes tomorrow. It's not fucking easy. It's hard. And it's a push. But so is life, man. And all of that is on top of birthdays and kids and this and that and fucking this and that. All the shit that keeps people out of the stock market. You got to do all of that and some. And that's why you hear me yell on a video like you, you you can't you can't let up, man. This will eat you. When the ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way, those who do things in this certain way, whether on purpose or accidental, get rich. While those who do not do things in a certain way, no matter how much they try or how hard they work, remain poor. So go read chapter four. I put out homework in that OnlyFans, and I'm doing commentary in there. And I have a link to it. Or five, excuse me. Help, I'm 40 and broke, but you could replace 40 with any age. And then go read chapter nine. And if we can agree on those two, ain't nothing. We're going to eat this thing. We're going to eat this market, man. Eat it. We're going to make a lot of money. All right, man. I love you guys. Be good. If I can help, let me know.